Good morning and welcome to the Week Ahead video with me, David Madden. Today's date is Friday the 8th of January 2021 and the time has just gone 11.10 GMT and I'm looking ahead to next week which is Monday the 11th until Friday the 15th of January. And before we take a look at what's going on next week, uh, let's take a quick look at what's been going on this week. Uh, it's been a great run uh, for global equities. We've seen multi-month highs, multi-decade highs, or in many cases, all-time highs racked up uh, on stock markets around the world. Um, why is this? Um, essentially, uh, traders the last few sessions have kind of shrugged off some of the concerns about the health crisis and, and the lockdowns uh, and really focused in on the fact uh, that, the, that there's, there's a belief going around uh, that the future uh, Biden administration uh, is going to be going down the route of introducing stimulus packages. Uh, overnight, uh, President Trump finally um, uh, acknowledged that there's going to be a change of administration uh, later on this month and, and that was kind of the, the kind of final confirmation that you know, there's going to be a transition of power, and with that, in the last few days, uh, there's been a bit, there's been a quite aggressive uh, move to the upside, particularly in U.S. stocks, which I'll be coming on to with the S&P 500. Um, records have, have, have records have been achieved, and that's rippled out across the board. Obviously, the lockdowns and, and the health crisis itself haven't gone away, but but the real kind of story has been the belief, um, the, the, the stimulus hope story. Uh, also playing in the mix, uh, we've, we've had a very popular, a very bullish run in the oil market. That's lifted energy stocks and has also contributed um, to the upward move we've seen in some indices. <clears throat> um, what I'll do is quickly run through some of the big economic indicators that are coming out next week. Then I go through a few of the popular charts and then talk about uh, some of the kind of corporate stories to watch out for next week. So looking ahead to next week, um, um, what's going to be in play? Uh, on, on the, we have some China data coming out on the 11th, uh, CPI and PPI, uh, but the real uh, update from China is, is going to be later on in the week, uh, we have the trade data. Um, China is obviously like the manufacturing shop, of manufacturing the workshop of the world, um, but its internal demand hasn't been great um, since because it hasn't rebounded fully in comparison with significant retail sales, um, in comparison with its, its manufacturing sector. Uh, so the internal section or the imports component of the Chinese data is going to be very much in play. Um, also, the external, the exports in China is going to give us a, a gauge for global demand. But keep in mind, a lot of the kind of um, PPE, uh, personal protective equipment, and, and relating to the health crisis itself comes from China. So sometimes those figures are skewed um, by the um, by updates in relation to the health crisis, in relation to exports. Um, also during the week, uh, we have CPI and retail sales and the beige book from the US. Uh, the, C the retail sales are going to give us a good indication of demand uh, in the US. Um, there's been some concerns recently that there's been a bit of a softening of the rebound in the economic in the US's economic recovery. The, the retail sales for the all important kind of from festive period. That's going to be a, that's going to be a good indication of how much are consumers will they go out and spend money. Um, we have a couple of GDP announcements next week. Uh, we have the monthly GDP reading for the month of November from the UK. The, obviously, there was a, um, a lockdown is reduced in England and other parts of the United Kingdom. That's going to that's be likely to show up. Uh, we, and we also have uh, the annual uh, GDP forecast, a particular estimate, um, estimate for 2020 uh, coming out from Germany on the 14th. Uh, what I'll quickly do now is kind of run through some of the big indices uh, and, um, and, and, and then look at some corporate stories. Uh, as you can see here, the, the FTSE 100 has been in a solid upward trend uh, the last few months. Uh, they traded above the kind of 6,900 mark, uh, which is the kind of the highest seen since, since basically the crisis began, um, kind of, you know, the spring, you know, February last year. We can see here that we're hit, we've hit multi-month highs. We've cooled ever so slightly. You could say that, that the, the long wick or the relatively long wick on yesterday's daily candle could denote a bit of indecision, which could mean we might trade it sideways for a bit, or, or maybe the upward trend would continue, but at a lower, at a slower pace. Uh, we're currently around 6,861 um, on, um, on, the, on, the, on the FTSE 100. If you press on higher from here, and if we were going to retake 6,900, next big number to look up or beyond that, the psychological number, 7,000. Any moves to the downside, we could find support from this general zone here in around 6,600. That would say 6,600 and just north of it, 
um, up to around 6,678. That area acted as resistance on a few occasions, so it could may well act as support uh, for any moves to the downside. Uh, taking a look at what's going on over in Germany, as mentioned, we get German GDP numbers out next week. Um, Germany, with Germany's DAX has, has hit a new record high today, so that really sums up how bullish the sentiment is. It's been a nice upward trend the last few sessions, a nice series of higher highs and higher lows. Um, we're currently north of 14,000. If you continue to press on higher from here, because it's uncharted territory, traders are looking up towards 14,100, 200 so on and so forth up towards kind of say 400 500 it's only really when you get into the high 1400s well then 1500 they could then potentially come on the radar um, if we do drift lower from here it could find support i think kind of, um, from this general area here in around 13600 or down to down towards 13565 I'll take a look at what's going on over in Japan. Uh, overnight, the Nikkei 225 hit its highest level since August 1990. So we're talking in you know, a multi-decade highs racked up. Today's candle, as you can see here, it was quite bullish. It's in this, a strong upward trend. Uh, if we press on higher from here, we could then be heading up towards 29,000 because we're currently around 28,170 there, thereabouts. So we're a fair distance away, but that'd be the, the next really big kind of number to look out for to the upside. Any moves lower um, in the, the Nikkei 2 to 5 could find support from this zone here in around 27,000 or just south of it in around 26,963. There, there about the lows really, um, what well, essentially the lows that were only seen uh, a few days ago. Um, let's look, take a look at what's going on with the S&P 500. Very strong situation, very strong market as well. New all-time high was racked up yesterday. When cash trading begins today, um, in about two and a half or so, or about, about two and a, or about two or three hours, um, we're expecting it to open at a new record high at, at three thousand eight hundred and fifteen. That's the current level we're expecting it to, to open at. Keep in mind uh, that the week ahead video was recorded in advance, uh, over two hours in advance of the U.S. non-farm payrolls. So these numbers might be old, but the, uh, these levels could be old, but. The trend for the last few sessions has been very much to the upside. If you press on higher from here, traders are going to be looking out for you know the recent we could be up, up towards um, 3,820, 30, 40, so on and so forth. So the more we kind of keep hitting all-time highs, the more likely we're going to achieve more all-time highs. Uh, if we do have a bit of a pullback, we could head back down towards 3,700 or even the kind of the um, the lows earlier on this week um, in around 3,000. 3,660. Uh, so it's a very clear, um, very clear across all the big those stock markets there, the indices that they're in a, in a bullish trend. But one of the tenets of Dow theory that the averages must confirm each other, which essentially says, if one, if if um, if if markets that are if, if the markets in an upward trend and similar markets too are also trending higher, you can be more confident of the move. Um, We'll take a quick, quick look at what's going on a couple of the currency pairs. We've got a couple of um, important economic indi indicators out next week. We have had some weakness in the dollar very recently, but in the last few sessions, uh, we have seen a turnaround, a rebound from the two and a half year low, or even longer than a two and a half year low. So only at the beginning of the week, um, pound dollar hit its highest level in over two and a half years. It's drifted a bit lower. Broad, you know, has been a, has been a move to the uh, drifting a bit lower. Um, if you continue to, to, to shift lower from here, we could head back down toward this area in one spot, 34.29. A break below that could take us back down toward the 50-day moving average, this, this blue line here, which as you can see, acted as nicely support of a couple of occasions recently. But if the broader upward trend and pound sterling continues, sorry, pound dollar, we could be heading up towards one spot, 37.92. But keep in mind, um, we have seen um, even though broadly speaking the dollar, the dollar has been weak, in the last couple of sessions we have seen a rebound. So is this going to be a rebound before the market turns over on itself yet again, or is it going to be a beginning of a fairly sizable pullback in the, in the dollar? Uh, this here is, is, um, is the euro versus the dollar. As, as, as you can see here, we're down to hit you know, a fresh over two and a half year high on Wednesday. But we can see here looking on um, Thursday's, Thursday's candle, uh, has the potential to be a bearish engulfing, whereby this red, red rectangle here, the body 
of the candle completely engulfs the previous day's positive candle, and now we're moving lower again. So if we continue to move lower on uh, euro dollar, uh, we could look at heading back down towards the lows of late late December in around one spot, 2129. And a move, move below that again could take us back down towards one spot, 20. Um, if the upward trend continues, keep an eye out for the recent high in around one spot, 2349. And if you go beyond that, my apologies. If you go beyond that, we could then be looking at heading back up towards one spot, 2480, a level which wasn't hasn't been seen in a while. My apologies. Thank you, charts. Yeah, we could be heading back up towards one spot, 2480, last seen in March. 2018. Um, keep in mind in terms of corporate stories, uh, we got a lot of the UK high street retailers are posting their numbers up next week. The big one is going to be Tesco. How people are going to be focused, how they get on over the all important Christmas period. Keep in mind um, that uh, both Morrisons and Sainsbury's uh, and M&S all have their numbers out today. Uh, the Morrisons and Sainsbury's numbers were, were, were probably, in terms of percentage sales, were, were, were quite good. As always with M&S, the, 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 the clothing department and the, and the homeware uh, uh, disappointed. This here is the uh, the, the share price of, of uh, the chart rather of Tesco. It's been a solid upward trend the last two weeks and months. In fact, the highs we saw uh, yesterday. Basically, the highs that we saw since May. So we're talking multi-month highs, a nice series of kind of higher highs and higher lows. If we continue to press on higher from here, and we take out the re the May high of, of um the May high of just 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 north of two pounds fifty, we could then be looking heading up towards up towards two pounds sixty, and uh, which was last seen in February last year. Also on the uh, the corporate front next week, we have JD Sports, we have Danelm, we have Boohoo, we have ASOS, uh, we have Associated British Food, uh, we have with a couple of updates on house builders, Persimmon and Taylor Wimpy. Now what I'll quickly, quickly go through is now let's take a look at, at Boohoo because the high street has been hit pretty hard uh, because of the lockdown. Um, but on the flip side, the coin Boohoo has done rather quite well out of it because it's an online fashion house. Now, the company itself had, had obviously their issues with their questions in relation to its supply chain, which had a pretty negative impact on the share price in July. But the broader trend, if you look at the lows, they're all higher, and we've been pushing higher the last few weeks and months. So if we continue to press on higher from here in Boohoo, we could be looking at targeting um, four pounds a share. If you go beyond that, we could then be looking at retesting the record highs that were achieved in, in June of this year. And boo, have their update coming out on the 14th. Now, lastly, I'll take a look at Persimmon, one of the biggest home builders uh, in the UK. They've got a trade. They've got a, a trading update, a, a quarterly trading update coming out next week. Basically, the housing market has been slowly, but the share price of the housing market has been grinding higher the last few months. It's found it difficult to really kind of get above, kind of get up towards £30 a share. But if you move higher from here, we could take off the recent highs, seeing it just before Christmas, heading back up towards £30 a share. And then if you go beyond that, we could maybe look at targeting the all time highs that were set uh, back in February. Um, of, back in February. Uh, of, uh, of 2020 back up towards 33 pounds a share. Um, that's all from this, this week. Have, thank you for listening. Have a good trading week and good luck.